I have written about 40,000 words of content recently. I am not sure how much I am going to use, I doubt I am going to use all of it, but I should use most of it. There are a lot of long-winded videos coming up. I really want to primarily make comedy videos, but I feel I have a lot of important things that need saying. When I start writing a video down on a certain subject, I tend to start digressing into other subjects a lot. I am going to split my digressions up into separate videos, so my videos can largely remain focused on one topic. Anyway, here is one of my shorter digressions. Why we need to stop using the term social justice warrior. I believe any successful pro-male movement needs to create its own frame of reference and syntax. The main problem pro-male men face, is that even pro-male MGTOWs are using syntax from other communities, so they are stuck in the frame of reference of other movements. This makes MGTOW easier to co-opt. Sadly it is too late for MGTOW, as that movement is largely taken over. One thing the feminist movement is very good at is creating a frame of reference and imposing it on everyone else. Let me give one example of this. Feminists in the past few years have come up with the concept of emotional labor. It is a very nasty and insidious concept, but also a stroke of genius as well. One of the main privileges females have, is the fact men are willing to support a woman in return for female validation. Men are willing to work full time to support a woman who works a less stressful part time job, or no job at all. The concept of emotional labor puts men on the defensive. Instead of women having to explain why they are taking advantage of men, men now have to explain why they are taking advantage of women by gaining free emotional support. The whole concept implies that men are taking advantage of women, that there is an injustice to be addressed. I do find it funny that feminist women are basically admitting that women are whores, and they expect to be paid to show affection to men. Men should be asking women when will women pay them back for all the free rides they have had off men in the past. When will women pay back all the alimony, all the child support, and all the free rent they have leached off men, then perhaps we can talk about emotional labor. Men are not very good at rejecting the feminist frame of reference. They tend to be apologetic and try explaining things to feminists while still stuck in the feminist frame. Men should reject the feminist frame of reference out of hand, and try imposing their own. He who controls the frame of reference in a debate has won the debate even before it has begun. The topic should be about women who take advantage of men, how women are enabled to take advantage of men by the state. The topic should be about women still expecting men to provide for them via traditional male gender roles, while simultaneously pushing men out of the job market with quotas and workplace laws that favor women. Also at the same time, female teachers are down marking boys in schools, damaging their future employment chances. Women expect men to slave for them yet they will damage their prospects of becoming a slave, it would be laughable, if it wasn't so harmful to men and boys. So women damage the employment prospects of men on a collective level, while expecting men to pander to them, to take care of them, to work for them in back-breaking jobs. Most anti-feminists are still too apologetic. Men have nothing to apologize for when it comes to women. Feminists are avoiding their own guilt by putting men on the back foot, by forcing their false frame onto men. I was just using the feminists as an example of a group that imposes their frame of reference onto others. Feminists are one of our primary enemies, and we should learn from our enemies. The feminist frame of reference is not our main problem though, it is the frame of reference of the right wing that is the primary problem. At least with the feminist frame it is easier to spot and reject out of hand. Right-wingers love to derail the pro-male conversation, and direct the issue towards their pointless right versus left war. One term that gets used a lot is social justice warrior, and that term must be rejected out of hand, and I will now explain why. The term social justice warrior is used by the right to mock feminists. It is a pejorative label to describe intersectional feminists. 
Feminists are experts at co-opting other movements. Feminists have made discrimination of gays and minorities their own issue. For example, there is a new pro-male channel called Black Pill. He is anti-feminist, yet he uses the feminist label LGBT to describe himself in one of his videos. The LGBT label is a feminist label that was applied to the old GLBT. The gay, lesbian, bi and transsexual movement was largely a gay man's movement, as gay men were one of the primary victims of discrimination within the GLBT community. Lesbian women were the least victimized, as lesbian sex wasn't illegal. After gay men took all the risks, did all the rioting, did the protesting, and laid the groundwork for the movement, privileged lesbian women told the gay men to check their privilege, and took over the movement, then they rebranded the GLBT, the LGBT. Their rebranding of the gay man's movement was a mark of their female social dominance. Gay men being male, naturally gave in, as men are naturally submissive to women. Anyway the point I am trying to make, is that even anti-feminists unwittingly use the feminist frame of reference. Female social dominance seems to extend into many spheres. Feminists have taken over the issues of minorities and using the term social justice warrior is conceding those issues to feminists. Apply that label, makes seem like feminists do fight for the rights of minorities, that they do fight against social injustice. As we know, feminists enact social injustices against men. Also the discriminations that minorities do face, are largely faced by the males of minorities not the women. In fact minority women are privileged over even middle class white men. Feminism is anti-male. Therefore feminism harms minority males. The term social justice warrior is used by right wing men who want to derail. The topic of anti-feminism becomes anti-leftism, soon as the term SJW gets used. Also a lot of right-wing men do not like gays, or minorities, they are more interested in banging on about gay men or black men than talking about the problems that all men face. The term SJW is a term right-wingers use to hijack the conversation. Also a lot of men seem too scared to call feminist out and use the term SJW instead. One example of that is a YouTube channel called Diversity in Comics. This whole channel is about tackling SJWs who have taken over Marvel Comics. Diversity in Comics is one of those people who believes that feminism used to be valid. He uses to term real feminist, to imply that SJWs are not real feminists. I am sorry. But the problem Marvel faces is not SJWs taking Marvel Comics over, but the fact feminists have taken Marvel Comics over. Diversity in Comics even did a video about Marvel hiring loads of women, in fact it seems that the movement Marvel is discriminating against men and largely hiring women. Feminism is a female advocacy movement, that advocates for female privileges at the cost of men. Pushing men out of work, and giving those jobs to women is something done by feminists, not social justice warriors. Diversity in comics hasn't got the courage to call a spade a spade. In his video about Marvel hiring mostly females, I didn't see many black or minority men being hired, it all seemed to be a clique of white women hiring each other. More proof that paratracheal theory is just females protecting their own and group bias onto men. He spends time attacking SJWs when his target should be anti-male feminists. By the way, I will not be linking to diversity in comics videos, as he has so many of them, I will instead just link to his channel. Watch his videos and judge for yourself. Diversity in comics spams out three videos a day, so I can't even find the videos I am talking about but I did watch them. I have seen white nationalists online use the term SJW. The white nationalist community must be rejected out of hand for being racist, but I also reject them out of hand of being gynocentric. White nationalists are some of the most lowly and pathetic woman worshippers out there. If you use the same terminology as another group, you will end up getting linked with that group.
there is no Faustian pact to be made with white nationalists. I am white, yet I realize there is no deal to be made with these people. It is not like I could sell out my black and yellow brothers and join the white nationalists and gain anything. Even if white nationalists were able to create their own communities, it is not like they would be pro-male in any sense of the word. They would be just as anti-male as mainstream society if not worse. White nationalists and homophobic men are not our allies. We must reject the term SJW, as it is their term. There is no such thing as a social justice warrior. Social justice warriors are simply intersectional feminists. The usage of the term SJW concedes minority issues to feminists, and that is what feminists want. If feminists want something, we should deny it to them on principle. If people use the term SJW to attack feminists all the time, outsiders are going to assume that feminists are the protectors of minority groups. Feminists have gained a lot of political capital by co-opting and controlling minority issues and groups towards their own ends. Feminism is a regressive political movement, feminism shares many traits in common with right-wing political hate groups, yet the average person considers feminism left-wing and progressive. Right-wingers using the term SJW all the time will only add to the confusion the average person has. Yes some people who realize that feminists have hijacked minority issues for their own ends, use the term SJW ironically, but most people don't. Most people who use the term SJW, are right-wingers who are fighting against the concept of equality. Many people fight against feminists because they believe feminists are really social justice warriors fighting for the rights of minorities, that feminists are really fighting for equality. Feminism has in fact created more inequality, right-wing men are largely fighting against feminists for the wrong reasons. Many of the reasons are completely fictional. Also these right-wing men make anti-feminism look bad. Most sane people want more equality, not less, so sane people are going to be driven away, by right-wing men complaining about equality. Also many of these right-wingers end up turning the issue into anti-communism, that just obfuscates the issue at hand even more. Right-wing men may not realize this, but when they advocate for inequality they are advocating for their own mistreatment. I am sure in the minds of these right-wing men, that they are alpha males, that would be on top of the food chain, in a more unjust unequal society. Men would be lucky to get some equality, yet stupid right-wingers whine about there being too much equality. Even if you discount the growing inequality between men and women, society is more unequal than either with a growing gap between the rich and poor. When someone uses the term SJW, they are stuck in the frame of reference of white nationalists, homophobes, transphobes and feminists at the same time. When feminists try hijacking the issues of gay men, or ethnic minorities, we should point out that those issues do not belong to feminists, and feminists have harmed gay men and men belonging to ethnic minorities. This is an attempt to shatter the feminist frame, something that anti-feminists and pro-male men should strive to do at all times. Let me give one example of how feminists have harmed black men in the USA. This is an example that can be used by you against feminists if you so wish. Currently there is a massive power imbalance between black women and black men in the USA. Black men play the role of the nigger slave to their black female masters. This may sound like exaggerated rhetoric, but it is not. Countless black men have had their lives destroyed by the child support racket. How many black men have been entrapped by a black woman after getting her pregnant? How many unwilling fathers have been forced to pay, or have been imprisoned in jail for not paying? How many willing fathers unable to see their kids have been forced to pay? How many willing fathers unable to pay have been imprisoned? Feminists lobbies like the National Organization of Women, have lobbied right-wing politicians to block alimony and equal shared parenting between the sexes. If there was more equal shared parenting there would be less of a pretext to enslave men via the child support racket. 
Feminists know this. They know the social dominance they have over men would decrease if this happened, so feminists in fact lobby to keep gender roles in place. The term nigger used in the context of male and female relationships is perfectly apt. Black women see black men as niggers, someone to be exploited and enslaved. They use the children of black men as hostages against them. Yet black feminist women have co-opted movements like Black Lives Matter for their own ends. It is black women who go on about the legacy of slavery in the USA the most. Yet currently black women are enslaving black men right now in the USA. The lack of self-awareness and hypocrisy of the black woman is unbelievable. The term intersectional was coined by a female black feminist called Kimball Williams Grenshaw. The problem with intersectional feminist theory, is that it assumes that women are the primary victims of oppression, it is completely blind to female privilege. For example in the USA, black women outlive white men. Left-wingers love to bang on about life expectancy statistics. The differences in life expectancy between black people and white people is one of their favorite subjects, and to them the differences are proof of systematic discrimination against black people. But they are largely silent on the life expectancy gap between the sexes. If you do manage to get them to talk about the subject, they will just mention that women naturally live longer than men. I wonder why they do not use the same logic on the life expectancy gap between black people and white people. These people will ignore the fact that women get more health care funding, that men get abused and neglected as children more, get downmarked in schools, get less protection from being homeless, work longer hours, work more dangerous jobs etc. These and various other factors must affect the life expectancy of men. The term SJW often gets applied to intersectional feminism. The usage of the term SJW gives intersectional feminism credibility. When feminists talk about the issues of minorities and gays, they often do so using an intersectional feminist frame. So if SJWs are really intersectional feminists, it would help bring clarity to the issue at hand to call them intersectional feminist, not the useless euphemism social justice warrior. Men are awful at focusing on relevant subjects. Too many men are obsessed with non-issues, for example a lot of MGTOWs and right-wing men are obsessed with transsexuals, they see them as a problem, I personally do not give a fuck about transsexuals either way. Blaming other groups for the problems of men is just a form of misplaced aggression. Often the type of man who lashes out at transsexuals, often tend to worship women, and want to pander to them. They want to enable gender roles that harm men directly. When men lash out at other groups, they tend to drive those groups into the arms of feminists, men are unnecessarily creating unneeded enemies. Men have two primary enemies they must face, heterosexual women and other heterosexual men. Men have the odds stacked against them more than enough, without lashing out at other groups. Once the term SJW is used, the conversation will get directed to the pet obsessions right-wing men have. So to sum it all up, the term social justice warrior is a term that must be rejected out of hand, the usage of the term is used by derailers the usage of the term concedes the issue of gay and ethnic minority rights to feminists. To outsiders it seems like the person using the term is against gay people and ethnic minorities, it will seem to the average outsider looking in, that right-wingers are sneering at feminists for sticking up for gays and ethnic minorities so it will make anti-feminists in general seem heartless and reactionary. If men in general seem heartless and reactionary, it will make people less empathetic towards men in general. Men have a hard enough time as it is getting attention to their issues, without wannabe alpha male right-wingers, acting like heartless cunts. In fact many right-wing men attack feminists for sticking up for gays and ethnic minorities. The conversation should be about how feminists harm gay men and ethnic minorities. Feminism harms all men, feminism harms gay men, feminism harms bi men, feminism harms black men, 
harms Asian men, harms Jewish men, harms Muslim men, harms sexually disenfranchised men, harms sexually successful men, harms rich men, harms poor men, harms left-wing men, harms right-wing men. The conversation shouldn't be lead by right-wingers, whining that feminism has created more effeminate faggot males. If these right-wingers believe themselves to be the gold standard of the ideal masculine male, I would rather be around an effeminate feminist faggot, than a posturing pseudo-alpha male like themselves. I tend to avoid the usage of certain terms as much as possible. I don't use the term red pill or blue pill anymore. I avoid the term cuck as much as possible, as the term is often used by anti-male men to lash out at other men. I avoid the terms beta and alpha male. I refuse to use the frame of reference of the alternative right. The Mktau community used many terms in common with the alternative right, and it got consumed by them. The Mktau community is largely dead. Without naming names, the best content makers have either left, or they have turned into sellouts churning out shit that is palatable to the alternative right. Too many Mktaus, bang on about the wall, and collapsing society, putting women in their place, etc. Too many Mktaus are just tradcons. I have no idea why they use the Mktau label, they are not honest with themselves. Even if a tradcon could put a woman in her place, and mate securely with her, he would still be anti-male, he would still want to put other men in their place and make them pander and watch themselves round his woman. For a short time during the golden age, the Mktau community was an amazing community, it was the only place to offer pro-male insight, that was not tainted by left versus right politics, or conspiracy theory crap. Then Mktau grew, and the retards from the PUA, and alternative right come in and then took over. They co-opted the term red pill and made it about their right-wing politics. Most of the Mgtaus enabled this, and only a few Mgtaus bothered to call the tradcons out. This is why I consider having our own frame of reference ultra important, we have to distinguish ourselves from other groups. I have nothing in common with a dickhead who voted for and supports Trump. Party political tribalists will always put their loyalty to the party before anything else. It happened with the anti-war movement and Obama. When Obama got into office, the anti-war movement largely died off, even though Obama was almost as big of a warmonger as Bush. It shows you that the anti-war movement was plastic. Too many people in the anti-war movement put their loyalty to their political tribe, the Democrat Party before their anti-war principles. I remember before the election all the stupid right-wing men waffling on about how Trump would be pro-male, and restore the balance between men and women. Most of these men never gave a shit about pro-maleness in any sense of the word, and are just happy that their political tribal leader got into power, that is all that matters to them. These idiots have gotten nothing from Trump. Most Trump supporters are anti-mass immigration, Trump is in fact pro-mass immigration, because corporations support mass immigration. Only idiots take what a politician says at face value. Also Trump has done nothing to repeal anti-male laws, because he is anti-male himself. Trump himself has said women are the superior sex. He said this before the election. It is not like Trump supporters have an excuse for ignoring these inconvenient truths. These idiots are not only co-opters of other movements, they are useless at even achieving their own political goals. Most men follow politics for emotional gratification. They live vicariously through the politicians they support. I noticed this about Obama supporters, the same is true of Trump supporters. The same will be true of supporters of any future political candidate. Pro-male men need to have their own syntax and frame of reference. It is needed, so they will never get submerged and co-opted again. If pro-male men do not learn from history what will happen is that that pro-male groups will get destroyed and co-opted every election cycle, by groups of political partisans who do not give a shit about male issues. In fact the first step to creating a pro-male community, is to create our own frame of reference, 
our own syntax, our own philosophical worldview. Once we have created this frame, we must stick to it and try and impose it on others, we must refuse the frame of reference of other groups. Our worldview is based on data and facts, and will of course be subject to change to new data and facts. The other side's worldview is based on emotion, lies and outright denial of reality. The other side includes every other political and ideological group out there, as almost every single one of them is anti-male. Communists are anti-male. Christians are anti-male. Socialists are anti-male. Muslims are anti-male. Capitalists are anti-male. The alternative right is anti-male. Anarchism is anti-male. The mainstream neocon right is anti-male. Environmentalists are anti-male. Heck even most Mugtaos are anti-male. I can give more examples, but the list would be too long. Anti-maleness seems to be the default setting for people. Reject the frame of reference of other groups, they are anti-male. They either need to form pro-male consciousness or quite frankly fuck off. We do not need these people within our spaces. More to come.